arthroscopy of the shoulder. The scope has been inserted posteriorly and the superior labrum appears stable to probing. The long head of biceps is now pulled down into the joint. This is a 30 degree scope and by rotating it round we can now follow the long head of biceps as it exits the joint. The biceps is pulled into the joint and we can see normal induration on its anterior side. Taking the scope anteriorly we can look laterally and we can see the anterior pulley that stabilizes the long head of biceps. This is the superior edge of subscapularis and by rotating the scope medially we can watch that as it passes medially. Looking inferiorly and internally rotating the shoulder we take some of the tension off and we can see the anterior part of the glenoid where pancart tears occur and the inferior part of the joint. Bring the scope up superiorly and rotating it out mid laterally we can see the undersurface of the cuff. So this is supraspinatus and the rotator cable. We now bring the scope more posteriorly and we can rotate the scope down so it's going to look inferiorly. As we pass around the head we can see the small bare area. This is normal but where hill sacs lesions occur. The scope is now dropped into the inferior recess. By abducting and externally rotating the shoulder we can see this band of tissue that appears. That's the posterior inferior glenohumeral ligament. By taking the scope upwards we can now come up the back of the labrum. So this is the posterior part of the labrum and the glenoid. And we're now back in the joint. The scope is now inserted through the anterior portal and we're looking posteriorly. So on the right we can see the humeral head and on the left the glenoid. This is the top of the labrum which we saw from the back and now we can view laterally and see the undersurface of the cuff. The joint tends to be quite tight but externally rotating the joint gives us a nice view of the posterior capsule and the posterior part of the glenoid. The scope is now brought more anteriorly and we're now trying to get a view of the anterior labrum and capsule we can just see there as we internally rotate the shoulder we're going to get a better view over the top of the subscapularis and we can just see the anterior part of the normal labrum and capsule and the insertion of the capsule where Hegel lesions occur. Looking more immediately we can follow the subscapularis this is the arch of the coracoid and in the distance will be the brachial plexus and various vessels. We now follow the subscapularis out more laterally and as we bring our scope back superiorly, we're back at the long head of biceps where we started.